Evan with Green Thumb here. <clears throat> We're at a potential customer's lawn we're just going to refer to as Mr. SM's lawn. So it looks like this lawn was originally primarily a fescue lawn. Um, it looks like it's uh, not been kept up with for many years before this homeowner purchased the home. We've had Bermuda move in, Nimble Wheel, and just about every sort of dicot weed and grassy weed. Um, that you find here in East Tennessee. Uh, we've got clo lots of clover throughout, dandelion, wild strawberry, uh, wild violet, um, some broadleaf dicots, presumably, presumably broadleaf plantain coming up. Uh, we've got monkey grass coming up here in one spot in the front. That stuff's pretty resilient. Um, it's it's going to be a, a few seasons before we see that uh, get pushed back. It'll even laugh off Roundup sometimes. <clears throat> then the other one of the other problems we have are these grassy weeds. Like this is called velvet grass. Um, it's not too unsightly, but it, I'll explain how we get rid of the grassy weeds in a little, little bit. But as we come back along here, around this garden, around this garden, from about right there, around up, and then into here is uh, just basically all weeds very little true grass in here so once this treatment takes effect um, I explained to the the homeowner that this would um, potentially be bare dirt especially right here um, it's just all all the weeds in bit thick weed some poetry of um, a little bit of the same here, but there's more grass here to hold things together than over there. Um, underneath this tree looks like it's been suffering for water for quite some time. When you get trees like this with shallow roots, they, I mean, well, any tree really, but especially with shallow roots, they just suck the water through the ground or out of the ground before the grass can get a hold of uh, the, the amount of water it needs. So the trick with that is, uh, well, of course, we're fighting a lot of shade here, so this may struggle for ever um but i can i can tell there's drought stress from me probing in the dirt and stuff with the soil sample probe um the trick with that is to adjust the irrigation so that this area gets a lot more water than you know somewhere else uh, maybe compared to the back now the front here um it's we do have some decent grasses mixed in here um, a lot a lot of clover um which is not too hard to take care of. We'll we'll take care of it pretty easily. Um, there's a few more grassy weeds in here. Um, this entire slope is extremely compact and extremely dry, um, and which is saying a lot because we've had quite a bit of rain recently. Uh, most lawns are are still the dirt is uh, the soil is is quite moist. Um, this was just dry and crumbly. Let me widen out here. So this was dry and crumbly all on this hillside and, and I'm sure it's just because the water runs off, the soil is compacted and it's just not really able to absorb the water quick enough. It just runs off. Um, some of the products that we use will help with that. Um, and then we will also need to address uh, the irrigation system. You know, this, this hillside needs a lot more water than say the back does. Um, that other spot of monkey grass is right up here in front of this last bush near the door. Um, and if you look down through here, you can see kind of a line where there's a lot more brown and a lot more green. And we see that when irrigation usually uh, is not up to the uh, snuff. Um, it starts near the road, the road gets hot and it bakes the dirt and gets extra hot near the road and it pushes the fescue. The fescue can't handle that much heat and that much dryness, but what can is Bermuda. So Bermuda comes in and takes a hold of that opportunity and starts taking ground and then it's just slowly working its way back up. Um, so the way to address that and the other grassy weeds like the velvet grass, there's some right there. The way to address that, there's two ways to go about it. Um, I know uh, Mr. M said he's, he's a pretty simple guy. He's not, he's not real complicated, but I do want you to know the options and we'll just do whatever you'd like. Um, we can remove all the, the, the broadleaf weeds, all the dicot weeds, we can remove all those and whatever new ones come up as they come up because there's going to be a summer crop that's not here yet. Um, 
get rid of those and feed what's here, get the Bermuda uh, when it comes uh, active again, when it gets hot, probably about May, feed the Bermuda, feed the fescue, and just have a mixed lawn. And it, every winter it will brown out like this in these, in these brown patches that are already here, um, but the weeds will be gone. Um, we can feed this fescue and get it healthy and feed the Bermuda and get it healthy. And you'll have a fairly uniform green lawn in the summer months. But then in, this, in the winter months, it will look similar to this. Of course, better because no broadleaf weeds, but more brown, more green, uh, just kind of patterned like it is. And we can seed through it to try to minimize that problem. Like this is a mixed patch. This is Bermuda and fescue, and that's just Bermuda. Um, so we can seed through it and it'll look like this throughout, or we can do, this is the, the most extreme option, um, but it has good results is, just come through and wipe out everything. Just take everything out, um, you know, get rid of all vegetation in the, in the lawn and start fresh. Just seed the entire thing. And that way you would come back uh, with a 100% fescue lawn. That's more of the showcase style lawn, um, you know, just one uniform species of grass throughout. Um, but it's totally, it uh, doesn't matter to us. It's up to the customer's preference and what their tolerance level is for a mix of lawn. Um, but you just let us know what you what you want to do. Oh, that and that would be coming in, in in the late summer. I'm not sure if I said that and doing that. So it'll look similar to this this year, and then we'd take it out in the late summer, put it back in between September and October, depending on the weather, and just start watering like crazy. And it would be all green come the the basically by the holidays, um, as long as we keep our watering up. But that's your options, and just point your finger, and, and we'll take care of it. All right, this is Evan with Green Thumb out.